What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome back to Tech Hunter. So I'm doing another monthly builds video and November for me is probably the best time to actually start thinking and start preparing and start buying your parts for your PC because November is full of tons of deals. You have Black Friday deals, you have Cyber Monday deals and then you also start to see the Christmas deals as well. So throughout the month of November, it's definitely the time to be looking at choosing your parts and then towards the end of November is when you start buying them closer to Black Friday. Black Friday is always full of great deals on usually SSDs is usually where you can find big savings. So I remember on, I believe last year I picked up a one terabyte SSD for about 30 or 40 pounds cheaper than it was say in, in October. So there's always that to consider as well as saving money on potentially other things. So maybe older graphics cards. So like a 2070 non super may well get discounted around this time because obviously it's being replaced by the super version. As well as that, usually Ryzen is always quite popular around this kind of time. I remember last year seeing the 2700X and the 2600 get dropped quite low for about a month or so. And then they generally and then they kind of rose back up to their previous prices so amd are usually quite nice guys when it comes to around black friday and christmas time intel well they're not usually that keen on lowering their prices but they may have to this year to try and keep up with what amd is offering without further ado we've got three different price points to take a look at we've got a 600 pounds a 912 pounds so 900 pounds and a 1500 pound mini itx pc i've gone a little bit more specialized with that one because it's got a case I really like the looks of and something I'd really like to do in the future. And the other prices are just generally kind of, 600 pound is what I would consider the cheapest PC you can get and have a really, really good gaming experience with some high settings. And 900 pound is kind of like that step up where you move from say good entry level to up to a good kind of mid tier gaming PC where you can crank it up to 1440p no problem and enjoy 60 FPS on most games with that graphics card in that build. 1500 pound PC is a little bit more kind of you're paying for looks because it is that smaller case. You do have to spend more on a motherboard. You then have to consider a, generally a more expensive power supply being an F SFX one, as well as a few other things uh, like limitations due to height of your CPU coolers and the length of your GPU. So that's all comes into consideration with smaller PCs but the mini ITX PC I'm, I've chosen in that build is generally not one that is not small enough to have to worry about those things too much, but I feel like it looks great and I really wanna get one. So yeah, let's jump in, have a look at the first build, the 600 pound PC and see just what that has to offer. And there we go. So the first PC you can see is this 600 pound PC. Clearly by the title, you can already know what's gonna be in this build primarily but I'll run you through my parts choices for each thing. November is a key time. You need to get this information quickly and fast. So first off, Ryzen 5 2600. It is older. It's not the as good as the 3600, but it is only 110 pounds, which is about 75 pounds cheaper than the 3600. And you could use that potential saving to go towards your graphics card. So with this case, we've got the GTX 1660 and if we had the 3600, we'd probably only be able to afford a 1650, which is quite a big step down. So that was my reasoning behind the 2600 over the 3600. The ASRock B450 Steel Legend is a great looking motherboard. You've got some RGB on there. You've got plenty of IO. It's just a really nice solid motherboard. You've got USB type C. You also have well, something I, I, I like personally is optical out for the audio because I generally like to use sound bars and things like that. And for £87, you get a ton of features as well as a great looking board. So not really too much to complain about there. RAM, Corsair Vengeance LPX, good, solid, reliable RAM. Works with Ryzen, never have any issues hitting those uh, recommended speeds in the XMP settings. So for £64, 26p. That's good going for 16 gigs of RAM in my opinion. The SSD for me is without any doubt the Intel 660p or the Crucial P1, whichever one is cheapest at the moment of speaking. They offer you NVMe speeds for the same price as SATA SSDs. So I think you can get around, I think it's around the 1500 read and write speed with this SSD and it's the exact same price, if not sometimes cheaper 
than an equivalent 500 gig uh, SATA SSD. By going M.2 instead of uh, SATA, you save on having to route cables at the expense of maybe 10 pounds. So it's up to you whether you go that route or not, but the NVMe is 10 pounds more and offers you nearly triple the speeds of the competing SATA drives. I mentioned earlier about the GPU, the EVGA GTX 1660 XC Black Edition is it's a great little single fan card. It performs just as well as maybe the dual fan equivalents. It's nice and thick, so bear that in mind. That is generally how it manages to keep itself so cool because of that massive thick heatsink. But it's a tiny little graphics card full of plenty of power. And it's also one of the cheapest. At £210, you can't complain when you have low temperatures and low noise from a very cheap graphics card. For the case, I've gone for the Aero Cool Shard. It is Pretty nice looking case, we've got some nice RGB lighting. I can't remember if it's tempered glass or not, but £33, I doubt it, and also, you can't really expect that price. Obviously, you could spend a bit more on the case if you're willing to maybe go over this budget. If you maybe want to spend an extra £20 or £30, you can get really nice cases from Fantex and Cooler Master, just to name a few. And I feel like these are a good, very low budget option. Aerocore will have a lot of these kind of cases, so pick your poison really. Case is all down to your pres personal preference. If you don't like it, spend a little bit more or spend a little bit less and get something with maybe more fans and more airflow, but maybe a potentially uglier design or very dated design is up to you really. For me, I like to spend a bit more for looks because it is the main thing you see, the case. It's basically what everything goes in. For me personally, I probably wouldn't get that case. I'd probably spend maybe 20 pounds more and get something like a Fantex P300, for example. For the power supply, this is a GameMax 80 plus bronze unit. It's 500 watts. The cables are all sleeved, so they're kind of nicer than maybe your traditional just unsleeved cables, but they are the ketchup and mustard colors. At the end of the day, 80 plus bronze for 30 pounds is something you can't really complain about. I've used Game Max power supplies before. I've done a ton of work with those guys. I've used their cases, their fans. I've never had any issues regards reliability. And for me, I wouldn't say there's any problem with this, especially in a low powered build. Maybe if you're pushing high end hardware, you'd probably want to go for maybe something a little bit more well known with maybe a better warranty service from like the likes of Corsair or EVGA or maybe Seasonic. But for me, I can't see you this causing any problems for you whatsoever. It's got that 80 plus bronze certification, so it's obviously meets a few standards to get that certification. For me, it doesn't make a ton of sense to spend a whack ton of money on a really expensive power supply. You can maybe spend an extra 20 pounds if you wanted to, just for peace of mind, to get one from like EVGA or Be Quiet, just for your personal peace of mind. I probably would spend the extra money, but if we're keeping to our 600 pound budget, you've got to cut corners somewhere, and the power supply is usually the first place to get the corners cut on. At the end of the day, tons of pre-built PCs ship with maybe cheaper than expected power supplies. Usually the first place where costs get cut is the power supply, and that is one place where I've saved some money in this build. Right, so moving on to the next PC. This one is 900 pounds, just over. Obviously, we can save money in Black Friday with this PC, I'm guessing. We've got the Ryzen 5 3600 six core processor. Ignore this warning, it says down here below, some B450 motherboards are not compatible already with the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, mainly down to their BIOS not being up to date, but this is one thing I have addressed with this PC. Some people have mentioned to me before, they don't wanna do it, they want the motherboard to just work straight away, and this is something that MSI have done. They've got these Max motherboards, Basically, that means that they are good to go with Ryzen straight out of the gate. I recently used a Max motherboard for my parents' new PC. They had a Ryzen 5 3400G, and I paired it with an MSI Gaming Plus Max motherboard. Plugged it in, no updates required whatsoever. It just worked out of the box. Absolutely perfect, what I wanted for them. They don't want any issues. They want speed and they wanted it quick. And the Max lineup is perfect. The, the Max is actually £10 cheaper than the original B450 Tomahawk, so there's that to think of as well. £96 when paired with the Ryzen 5 3600 is a good time all round. We've got those 6 cores and 12 threads. We're going to get great single core performance compared to our previous build. 
with the 2600 and we're also going to get improved multi-core performance as well with that kind of shift from 12 to 7 nanometer architecture that Ryzen undertook. For RAM, I've used the exact same kit. It's 16 gigs for 64 pounds. You could spend a little bit more and get 3600 megahertz speed for maybe, I think it's around 15 or 20 pounds more. I've seen them for close to the 80 pound mark, maybe just a little bit under. I would recommend you get that if you have the extra money to spare. Ryzen does like fast memory. 3600 megahertz RAM is a good place to start. As long as your timings are low, I think around 17 or 18 is good for 3600 megahertz. But if you're looking at the 3000 or 3200, you should be looking around the 15 mark if possible for your timings or CL16 as well. Like I mentioned earlier, the SSD choice chooses itself at the moment. If we're keeping to tight budgets, these NVMe SSDs from Crucial and Intel, the P1 and the 660P, you just can't compete with them. You step up from the entry level NVMe to the kind of more well-known NVMe speeds around the two and a half to three and a half thousand speeds mark is not too much. It may be around 30 or 40 pounds more. You can get one from A Data. I did. I think it was around 130 pounds for a one terabyte A Data NVMe SSD. And that has those kind of 3,000-ish reads and writes. If we're not sticking to a really tight budget, I'd probably say spend the extra money there to get those improved speeds if you can. But for me, if I'm recommending something, it's got to be something that's cheap, good, reliable, and crucial, and Intel offer that. The GPU, an AMD GPU, the 5700 XT 8GB Thick 2. This is one of the cheapest 5700 XTs. It also has a great cooler included. It's got that dual fan design. But as you can see from the pictures, the Thick 2 is clearly a thick card. We've got some nice heat sink. It's a really good, clean shroud. I really like how this GPU looks, really subtle look about it. But for £361, the Thick 2 is a great looking card, as well as performing really well and keeping those noise and temperatures down, which is something that Navi kind of struggled with when it first arrived with the uh, reference editions from AMD. But the add-in board partners have definitely addressed that. Those temperatures and noise levels have definitely come down. For the case, I've gone for the Antec Dark Phantom DP501. We've got tempered glass, we've got included ARGB, we get a fan at the rear as well, and overall it's got plenty of support to add more fans. I think you can add another two or three at the top, and then three more at the front. So there is room to add more fans in the future if you want to. As well as on the back, we also get the included ARGB controller, so you can connect more fans up to it. And at the end of the day, it's 52 pounds. So really for that kind of low, low price, you you're getting a lot more than what you would probably expect. You're getting tempered glass and included RGB lighting, as well as the expandability to add more ARGB products in the future and control them all through the uh, included controller. Antic are actually sending me this case out to do a review on, and they'll also be sending some fans with that as well to connect in and see just how well that case looks once it's all together. So if you are interested in seeing what that case actually looks like, please, don't forget to subscribe so you can see that video when that drops. For the power supply, this is an interesting one. I've not seen many 80 plus silver power supplies. For this Corsair Vengeance 650M is for sale at a few places. Amazon, Corsair still sell it, and Scan and Novatech. I always thought the Corsair Vengeance was like an old thing, but I'm not entirely sure now. I'm pretty sure they used to do it a few years ago. Maybe they've just found some old stock they're trying to sell off, but this is a good price for an 80 plus silver power supply. It's semi-modular, we've got the black cables included, and for 70 pounds, you can't really complain from a 650 watt power supply from Corsair. So overall, for 900 pounds, I feel like we're getting an absolute ball in PC. I recently did a 1,000 pound gaming PC video, and that build right there will outperform it for 100 pounds less. Mainly down to that 5700 XT, outperforming what I used, the RTX 2070, which is back there, and that Tomahawk Max, also having to save updates on BIOS and BIOS flashbacks or using an old CPU. And we also get a pretty nice looking case with some included RGB lighting, which in my case had a little bit of, but not as much as that Antec one. And it costs more, £20 more as well. So overall, really happy with how that looks for £900. But now my favorite one, the one I'm kind of most excited about, the one I would love to build if I had the money and the parts, this is my 1500 pounds mini ITX PC. 
For the CPU, it was quite an easy one. It was the Ryzen 7 3700X. At that price point, nothing really competes. The 9600K probably comes close, but then you're going from six cores and six threads to eight cores and 16 threads. So as far as multitasking work goes, the 3700X absolutely crushes it. And for me, it's just a simple choice in 2019. The 3700X is pretty much the best gaming CPU that AMD have to offer. The 3900X, I'd say it can outperform it, but then you're paying 120 pounds more for like a one or two percent increase so for me it's a no-brainer to get the cheap one unless you need those extra cores for the cpu cooler we could have gone with the stock cooler and saved some money but i've chosen the hyper 212 rgb black edition because it looks great it fits with the kind of theme of the build it's quite a kind of small cooler as well it's not very tall in comparison to say something from noctua or be quiet and for me it looks great as well it kind of it's all black with that RGB bling and it gives it a really nice kind of effect I feel. For the motherboard there wasn't really a lot of choice. I wanted to go X570 because it's the new platform and I generally always use B450 unless I'm trying to, unless I've got the budget to spend a little bit more money. And this board from Gigabyte has a ton of features. We get the integrated IO shield, we get Wi-Fi, we get uh, Ryzen's new kind of PCI Gen 4 supports so we could use a lot more expensive but a lot faster gen 4 ssds we get some included rgb lighting as well as that chipset fan to keep things cool at maybe the potential bit of noise included but overall though i've never used an x570 board and i probably won't for a while until those prices start to come down and it makes more sense to use them over a b450 or an x470 equivalent for ram we've got corsair vengeance rgb pro RGB RAM from Corsair looks awesome, especially the Pro stuff. This looks great. Really nice diffused kind of effect on the top of it. It's also 3600 speeds at 92 pounds. We looked at the 3000 speeds earlier and that was 64 pounds. So for 30 pounds more, you get an RGB and faster RAM. For me, no brainer. I would spend the extra money there for the RGB lighting, probably alone, plus the included bonus of an extra 600 megahertz increase in ram speed well you can't complain at that ssd surprise surprise i've gone for a two terabyte nvme ssd from intel it's the 660p intel has to make an appearance somewhere so we need to use their ssds and for me two terabytes 189 pounds ssd is ridiculous especially when you consider the fact that it's nvme as well and it also saves on cable clutter, which is something to bear in mind with mini ITX PCs. For the graphics cards, we've got the GTX RTX 2070 Super. I was leaning towards the 2080 because they've kind of come down in price to around a 600 pound mark. But the difference between the 2070 Super and the 2080 isn't a lot. And it's definitely not worth the 130 pound difference. So. The RTX 2070 from Gigabyte here is the cheapest one around. You can get some others, obviously from MSI and whoever, for a little bit more money. But for me, the triple fan design is a great design. It's nice and quiet. It's really cool. And it's just, it's unoffensive as well, which I like. So the power supply, we've had to go on SFX. And we've got the Silverstone 600 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply. It's got a tiny little fan, which could potentially be noisy. I couldn't vouch for that. I would assume it's potentially noisy due to the small fan, but it is fully modular and that is something we are after with this build. If it, the noise is a problem, I probably would return it and maybe spend a little bit more and get something from the likes of EVGA or Be Quiet, maybe an SFX L power supply because they then come with the bigger fans and you are kind of more or less guaranteed to have a quieter PC with the bigger fans. For the case, the most important part and the whole reason behind this build is the Lian Li TU150. I love this little thing. I think it's awesome. It's got a handle. I love that. More PCs should come with handles, especially one that's integrated as neatly as that. I've seen like the, I think it's the ROG case that just come out, has those big straps on it. That's ugly, ugly as hell. Integrated handle that pops in and pops out. I can appreciate that. We also have tempered glass. We've got nice little feet to raise it up from the bottom, which is also a good thing because that's probably where potentially some of your airflow will be coming from at the bottom. We've also got a wonky, <laughs> that's a good promo picture. 
We've also got a wonky PCIe slot. The good thing is we can use the kind of thicker three slot cards, which is good to know. And we also get a big cutout at the back for a 120mm fan. And also the pre-installed routed cable for the SFX power supply, which then goes at the front or the top. I can't remember. I think it's the front top. Don't quote me. I've not built in this thing. I would like to though. I just really like how this case looks overall. You've got those, you can also take the top panel off to route your cables up there. It's really well designed case. It's really good looking. And for 110 pounds, you get also get USB type C on included as well, which is nice. But premium mini ITX cases are hard to come by. If you've ever watched any videos by Optimum Tech, he's a huge enthusiast of the kind of mini ITX small form factor PCs. And a lot of the cases he usually checks out are close to that 200 pound mark, like the Dan A4 and uh, Ghost low key Ghost S1 are close to that 200 pound, $200 mark. And the TU150, nearly half that. And it has a handle. But at the end of the day, it is a bigger case than what he usually checks out. So for me, I'm happy with the size of that. That looks awesome. And I'd love to have that as my kind of own personal LAN PC build, especially with all that hardware inside of it, with that eight core 16 thread and that 2070 Supra. You can game on this thing. You can edit videos on this thing and you can just walk around with it like a little handbag or a little suitcase, depending on what you want to do with it. But at the end of the day, guys, that's pretty much it for today's build. Don't forget to check these PC builds out maybe later in the month as well because at the end of the day, these prices are gonna get lower and lower throughout the month of November, which is why I'm recording this a little bit early, just at the end of October, just so I can get this video out and ready for the month of November for all those crazy deals start happening. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that you do bear in mind these builds and check out the links in the description down below because at the end of the day, these prices are subject to change. They will definitely be some price fluctuation throughout a lot of these parts throughout the next month so please do not hesitate to check back this video click those links and of course if you need to change them to your respective country in the top right hand corner of pc part picker you can choose your country whether it be us germany france whatever and those parts those will then get changed to your local retailers as well if some of them don't show up just feel free to say click the x and then choose the cheapest or the best graphics card in that kind of option or if it's an SSD that's not the same. Again, look out for the best deals in the your local area. So that brings us to the end of the video, guys. As always, guys, if my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below. And if you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please do click that like button. It really helps and goes a long way. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.